At the beginning of each podcast episode, hosts will typically read an ad for another company, but we're going to take this opportunity to promote and plug what we're building. We are building an AI-powered app that's going to be your personal mindset coach. Think about it as if you had a therapist in your pocket, one that will help you get to know who you really are, process your emotions, and make sense of your thoughts. The app launch waitlist is back live, and it's on our website. For convenience, we also left the link in the show notes. It's very simple. All you got to do is put your name and email address, and you're signed up for the waitlist. So you'll be the first to know when we launch, and also you'll be the first to be able to actually test it. For now, here's a clip from this week's episode. Hello Latino was always meant to be a space to represent our, our people, represent the first generation story, and talk about that identity of like being ni de aquí, ni de allá, o de los dos, while also talking about vulnerable things that we don't get to talk about. Like that's always been the purpose. And I'm like regrounding myself in that purpose. And I think that imposter syndrome is coming with the business side of like, I'm so good at coming up with ideas that don't make me money. <laughs> like, <laughs> that is so real. All right, but side note, right? Congrats on moving to New York. You know, it's so funny. I posted that I was in New York and then one of my friends who's local, he's like, this is getting out of control. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm not always here just because there's a reason. I mean, -ish. <laughs> I mean, you. so you're not like officially a New York resident, but yeah, like you're here all the time. I'm like, I'm here all the time. Didn't we go to Dominican Sushi the last time? And I was like, okay, cheers. I'll be back in February. Yeah, and you start yeah. cracking up. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to be back in April. That's crazy. But that's that's like you big time now. You no, got I'm the, not no big time. No, you're too modest. No, I'm not big time. How long? How long have you been in this new job? It's it's a year. Is when when was the year? It's been a, I feel like I've been there for like seven years, but I've been there a year. In March, it'll be a year. We gotta celebrate when you, when you come back in April. When I come back in <laughs> April, we're gonna celebrate my one year. Yes, and then I'll be back again in August. Okay, okay. I'm going to just give you my itinerary, like, Please. New York, New York, New York. But it's been fire. Honestly, I love it so much here because it's so different than, like, how New I York, grew up. New York, you mean? Yeah, I feel like San Diego is the exact opposite of New York. In what ways? Every way. Like, San Diego is laid back, chill. We drive everywhere. It's, it's just, like, everyone's smiling and, like... <laughs> <laughs> they chilling like everyone's just like having a good time and i feel like in new york not that people aren't having a good time but i feel like people are just minding their own business like they don't got time for you know what i mean i'm not trying to be like rude but i'm saying like people in new york just have this realness to them where i feel like in southern california not to hate on my hometown but there's a there's like a niceness but it's like overly nice where i'm like are you serious like are you really just being nice or are you just like so New York is real, California's fake is what you're saying. That's what you said. I didn't say <laughs> it. What's that? There's a saying that says, people on the West Coast are nice but not kind, but people in New York are kind but not nice. Okay, Shakespeare. I didn't say That's not my words. <laughs> I'm saying like that's how I feel, though, and I really genuinely feel it. And so, I think it's also like the Latin community is popping here, and so I feel mm -hmm. like it's a different type of Latino community out here. Yo, just, just say what you want to say. You like the fact that you're surrounded <laughs> by Dominicans and Puerto Ricans here. Uh <laughs> <laughs> say, just say I what you gotta no, say. No, I like that when I say I'm Honduran, people are not like, what is that? Is that still Latino? Do what you speak Spanish? But isn't Spanish like Mexican? Like all those questions, I don't get it here. <laughs> what do you get instead? Um, are you Dominican? <laughs> <laughs> people do ask me, you need to go to the West Coast. And low key, you'd be like, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. You people always think I'm Dominican, but I think it's because that's what they're surrounded by. I don't get Puerto Rican, but I would maybe if I was here like twenty years ago, they would be like, "Oh, are you Puerto Rican?" I could see that. You know what I mean? But that's it's getting ambiguous. But this idea of you being in New York, like you're doing it for work, right? Yeah. And travel, mommy's in full effect. <laughs> yeah. Like you've been traveling a lot, and I think it's, I think it's worth thinking about. Like, what are some of the other luxuries that you've been afforded being in this new role? That's yeah. one. That's got to be one of them. 
Yeah. And it's not just New York you've been to. Where, where else you been traveling for work? Uh, Mexico City, Brazil. By the way, didn't invite me to Mexico City. I was ready for that one. No, you weren't. Yeah. Were you really? Yeah, I told you. Well, see, this is the thing. People always say they're down, but then, like, are you really down? Like, are down. you actually going to come? I would have been down. For Mexico City, I would have been down. Mexico City's lit. Oh, my I God. I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, you've never been. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, listen. I have you always said. You only give me the New York itinerary. Where's his international trips? I'm going to Brazil next week. Next week? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> You know what's kind of crazy? It's been it's been a year since I've been single, funny enough. And I remember when I moved out of the Bay, ended this relationship, I said, I want, and this is before I even got the role, I really wanted a job that gave me some type of freedom to travel. Mm -hmm. I did not think that meant this role would give me opportunities to travel. I just wanted like maybe a remote job or maybe like, a job that has unlimited PTO. Like I wanted something that gave me flexibility to travel. I didn't know when they told me about the role, they're like 20% of it is travel. And I was like, oh, that's dope. Cool. No, this role is like 80% travel. <laughs> like I am traveling. I am on a plane more than I am at my own home. And I just feel like whatever manifestation or whatever you want to call it, like to work towards something and like really believe and almost be a little delusional. Like I'm mm -hmm. going to get a role that gives me this flexibility. It's just crazy to be here now and be like, I'm I'm doing the thing. How does doing what, I what are some of the feelings that come up when when you think about traveling? Because as fun as it is, there's like oh, pros and cons to it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So tell me tell me about like these some of the exhausting bags. parts. These eye bags, my bed. These eye bags. You don't get no sleep. <laughs> I don't get no sleep. I mean, I'm trying to prioritize it now, but I think the cons, the pros is obviously I get to see the world and I get to. There's a lot of privilege I feel with it. And yeah. sometimes first world problems. Like, like it, it feels weird to complain about. It feels, I'm so exhausted from my yeah, trip to Brazil. Yes. That I didn't pay anything for. Yes. <laughs> yes. It feels a lot of them are solo, solo travels. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of healing and growth that comes with that, which is really interesting because, you know, you hear people say like, oh, do solo travels. Like I've been forced to solo travel. And it's. It's so liberating. It's so eye-opening, too. Like, I really have to enjoy my own company. <laughs> Is that yeah. something you're not used to, enjoying your own company? I think at the it just showed me a lot about myself. Because you know me, I'm always with people. Like, I'm always, oops, I'm always surrounded by people. And I feel like hanging out with myself during the first, like, few months of, like, everything was changing, right? New job, new, I was single, and then, like, moving away from the Bay. It was a lot of, like damn she's a little sad like mm. you know and just like sitting with those feelings and just being like okay with it and I, I don't know it's just a lot a lot came to the surface for me and to just like witness my own healing journey from when I started this job and traveling and all those changes happened to now like I've really done so much healing and I witnessed it firsthand by myself because I had to what were some of the things that came up you said but we're gonna have to ask you some questions because you asked me all the questions. We could do that. Yeah, yeah. What are some <laughs> things that came up? Um, at the beginning, I felt like I was a bit numb. Like I was just traveling and I was just like existing. It felt like I was just being. But then I was like, "Does that make sense?" No. What I'm do like, you mean? I saw you confused. Um, <laughs> that's just my face. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just naturally. That's just my face. I naturally just look confused. No, I felt like, I don't know. Like, I felt like I wasn't enjoying the moment. I was just kind of, like, passing mm. by it. Like, you know, I felt like I was, like, outside of myself, just like, witnessing me okay. on these travels. I feel you. Is it, like, is it because you felt rushed, maybe? Yeah. Because yeah. I, would, I wasn't ready. When I was traveling for work, when I was at Facebook, and also, you can't even compare these trips, because <laughs> my ass was going to Kansas City. Like every month, and it's you went to like Brazil, Mexico okay? City. That's fair. Send me to Kansas City. I'm just kidding, though. No. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I would go <laughs> did to you Kansas get some City. They did have a good barbecue. Okay. They did. I, so I you would mostly to, did like domestic travel. Yeah, I mean, my clients were. I mean, because you had, your clients City? are internal, and like you're yeah. meeting all the internal folks. Like my clients, sales wise, like I was working on the Sprint account, so it was a lot. Of, yeah. It was Kansas City all day. There was also the Garmin <laughs> account for like the runners out there. They're oh. in Kansas City. Um, Sometimes, like, once I went to Dallas for AT&T or, like, once I went to L.A., 
but even when I did those trips, it was like in and out. Like I got a meeting and everyone yeah. is trying to get on the flight right after the meeting just to get back home to their kids mm. and all these things. Whereas like, I don't feel like I got time. I had time to actually enjoy the city. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How do you feel now being like an entrepreneur and not having those trips, but you get to do different types of trips. You get to do different, maybe more leisure. Like, how do you feel now? I see what you did there. You're like, let me ask him a question. Get this off of me. It's called <laughs> deflecting. <laughs> <laughs> I like the autonomy and the freedom to decide where I want to go and where mm -hmm. I can go and what I'm going to do when I am there. Yeah. So that's cool. But at the same time, like, they were, like, free trips that people were, like, taking me on. Yeah. But sometimes, like, those free trips, now that I think about it, like, yeah, it was cool that I got to go to London for, like, a Dyson meeting. But, like, it, it was, like, I was in London. Like, I can check that off the box, like, a passport stamp. Yeah. But I feel like I wasn't, like, in London because I didn't get, I didn't have enough time to explore it. So it's, like, it's, like, what's the point of money mm -hmm. if you don't have time to spend it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now I'm in the sense of, like, even if I do do a work trip where I just record content or do a presentation, I can take the time to, like, enjoy the city and not feel like I have to rush back home to be in the office yeah. to get this report out or something like that. I, I never said – I never thought about that. I see what you mean. Yeah. Is that what you meant by, feel, yeah. like, feeling numb? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And it's just – it's a weird – it's almost like you're just on the go. You're just, like, on this, like, wheel and you're just going. And then I feel like I've been – squeezing in more time to just be like these trips for me are the same the work trips i'm like busy there's this event there's yeah. that event i'm recording i'm filming i'm doing this now like i've been able to just squeeze in time for me even if it's just i want to go out to that one restaurant or i want to go see this one thing like doing something in every trip that's for me yeah and new york just happens to be my favorite because all my <laughs> homies are here <laughs> did, did it feel <clears throat> did it feel a little like imposter ish like giving all uh, getting all these like newfound luxuries because you worked for tech before yeah but it was it was contract right it was contract and now you're full time not only full time but being flown out you're like they're spending money on me you know it's funny I don't feel imposter syndrome here mm. I feel like in a way there was a little bit of disbelief at the beginning like damn they're sending me to London damn they're sending me to China like what me but it was never like oh my god they're spending all this money on me it was more like finally like finally they like sending me around the world because i feel mm -hmm. like i i feel like i love people and i love being out of my element when it comes to traveling specifically you like being out of your element when it, oh yeah traveling yeah. there's something about traveling that makes me feel free but you like, but you like being out of your element. So you like being uncomfortable in a way, like when you, like a culture shock. That's kind of why thing? I said in traveling specifically, right. because out of my element, just like day to day, I'm like, like, I don't like it. But like, out of my element when I'm traveling, I love it. I don't know what it is. Like, there's, cause there's a side of me like I've just realized. I don't crave labor. Like, I don't have this dream <laughs> job where I'm like, I want to work in corporate. I want to be CEO of this. Like, I don't have those types of aspirations like i want to build something that's mine mm -hmm. but you know we got to pay bills and you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so we here we work in but there's no i just want to like be free like I, there's this part of me that's just like this free spirit and i feel like corporate tends to like box that a lot of the time and that's why i feel so much imposter syndrome like now being free like being on the road and like meeting people everywhere like i feel like I'm in a place where I have been wanting to be. And I just feel like this free spirit is really at the surface. And I love her. Like I love when she's just like in her element. Yeah. Out of her element. But in her element. But with all that traveling, do you does it feel like you have enough time to to work on those other things that you want to build for yourself? It gets difficult, for sure. It gets difficult. But I feel like it's created imposter syndrome in my business. Really? Yes. What Sometimes I feel like I don't want to be this corporate sellout. You feel me? You feel like a sellout? Sometimes. Sometimes because I feel like I don't put in a lot of as much effort as I want to in my podcast because I'm traveling so much, right? Like even right now, 
meeting with like a potential client has been hard because I'm like, I'm traveling. So it's not like I can just fit you in on a Tuesday randomly because I'm going to be on a plane. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that sometimes feels like I don't want my clients to think I won't be able to do Mm -hmm. what I told that person I can do because Mm -hmm. I'm traveling, because my work is demanding. And so sometimes I feel like imposter syndrome, like, can I really do this? Can I really show up for my clients, my podcast, post weekly, post on social media? Can I do all those things and still enjoy traveling and still do my job? Yo, but sell out with such a that's a that's a hard word, yo. Yeah. You, I don't I don't think you realize how dope you are sometimes. Don't make me cry. And it and it <laughs> it, it really frustrates me. What do you mean? No, <laughs> what do you oh, mean? I'm getting all red. Not I'm for real. Like I, I really, I really don't think you realize, or I just don't th- think you realize how dope you are. Okay. I'll give you an example, and you'll probably laugh at this, right? But sneak peek for the audience, maybe not sneak peek, but insider information. We were gonna throw a little mixer this week because you were in town, <laughs> right? I was, yeah. And the idea was to collaborate on it, mm-hmm. right? Bring both audiences together, blah blah blah. But I think one of the reasons you wanted to collaborate is because you were doubting your own ability to do it yourself. Why are you coming for me like that? <laughs> Why are you coming for my life? But like I the, live. <laughs> <laughs> but like live. that's one of those things where I'm just like, oh, the Alice could do this. Like she yeah. does. She doesn't need me. Like, and I want to support her in that. Yeah. Like I would have supported your flyer. I would have like promoted that out of it but like yeah i don't know i just i just wish you saw what other people saw damn this is really getting like my bad i was like this is gonna go crazy no but it's true like yeah like don't that, make like, me cry you telling me you have imposter syndrome <laughs> over your thing i'm just like yeah yeah yeah. i appreciate that i wait but was that was that a fair assessment and not wanting to do your on your own that that's real that's real okay i think it's in a way in a way, I think there's there's a side of me that feels like I um, I'm just not like business savvy all the time. Like when it comes mm. to I feel OK, I'm going to backtrack. I feel like the podcast grew so fast before I get flashed before my eyes. I'm like, it's four years now. Like I've been doing this podcast for a while and it turned into more than what I thought it would turn into. Like it started as a passion project yeah. and then like. I got, I was part of a network and then I'm like, started getting clients that wanted to pay me to come in. Like, it was just, it was crazy how I didn't plan for any of it. Like the business side of it, I didn't plan for any of that. And then there was like a moment there where I started to feel like I wanted more, more business. Like, how do I turn this into like a full-time thing? I left my job and like, you know, I, I thought about it more as like, un negocio, like I want to do this whole thing. And then I feel like along the way, I reprioritized the business aspect and trying to learn that skill, which doesn't come naturally to me. I'm like such a creative. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I lost sight of the creativity and the passion, especially because at that time, I didn't have a job. So I was just like throwing all of myself into how do I make this a full blown business instead of focusing on how do I make this content amazing? Like, how do I just put out dope? How do I just put out dope? Like, I wasn't thinking about it that way. And then I got back into corporate and then corporate balancing the two again. And I feel like I'm coming back to my purpose with starting this podcast. Like Hella Latino was always meant to be a space to represent our our people, represent the first generation story and talk about that identity of like being ni de aquí ni de allá o de los dos. While also talking about vulnerable things that we don't get to talk about. Like that's always Mm -hmm. been the purpose. And I'm like regrounding myself in that purpose and i think that imposter syndrome is coming with the business side of like i'm so good at coming up with ideas that don't make me money <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> that is so real i'm like i want to do this whole mixer but i want it to be like a party like oh but is there's no business like aspect to it. Do I need to make it more businessy? And I think the part of it was like, maybe let's bring Pavel in because maybe he knows. I feel like you know a lot about business and like sales and that world. So I'm like, maybe we can put our brains together and we can create something dope. But it's it's so funny that like you probably don't need the business because you have a full time job. 
Like, why are you, why are you putting pressure on yourself to make money for it? I don't know. It? When the whole time <laughs> you just said, all I want to do is make dope shit. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But I feel like money is always like, this part of the first gen struggle. I'm like, money is always in the back of my mind. I get it. Always. I'm like, well, if I'm doing this, it needs to bring in some type of income. But it doesn't. Period. It yeah. doesn't. Maybe for me, because I don't because this is my full time thing. Yeah. You're like, no, I gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you you're good. Me. But yeah, it's been interesting. The imposter syndrome is coming out. It's coming out a lot in in Hello Latino. But it it's interesting too, because like it's one of those things that we're just putting the pressure on ourselves to monetize everything, right? Yes. Whereas, like, I'm sure no one told you, like, hey, that mixer you're going to do, like, do, what's your monetization strategy? I didn't even know I could monetize a podcast. Like, that wasn't even on my mind when I started it. Right, right. I'm going to be real. I didn't even podcast. I didn't even listen to podcasts before I even started my own. <laughs> like, I wasn't, I wasn't in that world. Like, I didn't. I just was trying to find an outlet to tell these really dope stories that yeah. I feel like people needed to hear. And I was like, I'm a writer, right? So I'm like, maybe a blog, like maybe this. And then I like started to listen to podcasts during the pandemic. And I was like, wait, this is kind of dope to do audio storytelling. Mm -hmm. Fire. Yeah. I but mean, I, I wasn't like, yeah, I wasn't thinking about monetizing networks. I wasn't even thinking about the ads that were on there. Like I was just like, this is cool. Yeah. I mean, I think one thing too that we spoke about that, is something that you probably continue thinking about is like the the perfectionist side of you. You have that too, don't you? No. Didn't we talk about this? I'm the complete opposite. Damn, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I just did an episode about this, but like I'm I'm a done is better than perfect kind of guy. Really? Yeah. Like I don't mind putting out something that isn't the like. Has I, that always been you? Yeah. But no, no, no. You know what? I think I've tried to be a perfectionist because I think that's what society tells you that you should be. Mm. Like, I remember going on in interviews, and, you know, like, it's like, what's your weakness? It was like, oh, I'm, I'm, too perfect. I'm too, I'm too much of a perfectionist. So I, I spend so much time looking at the little details. <laughs> I'm not, though. Like, oh, I'd wow. rather put something out there in the market, mm -hmm. see how it does, and then just continue iterating as we go along. Like, I'm okay with, like, people not liking the first version of it. Wow. Yeah. And you've always been that way. No. Well, I'm saying like I used to not be that because I thought that society wanted me to be a certain way. But naturally, I'm saying but that's naturally, always yes. been you. Naturally, I've just wanted to put things out there as quickly as possible. Wow. Yeah. And so now like with your with plural, you feel like you tap into that a lot more. That ability of just be like done doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it sometimes makes people that I work with really uncomfortable. Really? Because they're like, well, my name's on it too. And it isn't perfect. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> No, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, I've had I've had I've had similar experiences in corporate as well. Yeah. Especially in, in tech when you they hire a bunch of like type A type of people. Yeah. And like I think so even at Facebook, right? Like one of the values was literally move fast and break things. Some shit like that. Mm. And the idea was like, done is better than perfect. Like, move as quickly as possible. We'll figure it out later. But I don't think they always, I think they hired a lot more perfectionist type of people that wanted it yeah. to look a certain way and perfect and all these kind of things. So even like that that day when like my PowerPoint slide was called Ghetto, I told you about that. No. Uh, yeah. One day at Facebook, like I handed in a PowerPoint and they were like, this slide looks ghetto. Can you fix it? Oh. I think that, that was a perfect example of the conflict between someone, me, who is like a done is better than perfect kind of guy, mm. handing in a PowerPoint to a perfectionist yeah, and us having different ideas of what done looks like. You know what you're kind of reminding me of right now? What? Is, <laughs> is I'm thinking about like the cultural norms that I grew mm. up with. Like my dad, if he was, if he was tasked to do something... Oh my God, my mom would have 10 million like complaints. <laughs> Ay, no lo hizo bien. Eso no está chueco. She would have all the complaints and he'd be like, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. But my mom is a perfectionist. I'm so your dad. she'd be like, and I'm my mom. Like, it's, yeah. it's funny to think about a lot of the men in my family are like that though. Like, they just, they just get it done. They're like, okay, you want this? Okay, and I'm gonna do it on my time. I'm gonna do it whenever I want, you know, and it's just gonna be however it is. No. Like, if a woman does it in the family, I'm saying, 
it's like, no tiene que ser perfecto, and you need to do it right now if I ask. Like, it's hay prisa, hay urgencia. Like, you need to get get mm. on it. So you're reminding me a little bit of, like, the cultural norms, like, the men I grew up with. <laughs> Just like, if it's done, it's done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I know a bunch of men, too, that are, like, Oh no, I'm no, I'm not saying yeah. I'm not saying like I know that there's type A men, but I'm just it's is there like liberation with that? Like do you not stress? Or how do you like what is what are some like triggers of your stress? A triggers of my stress. Because I feel like my perfectionism is what stresses me out. See, I'm cool with putting stuff out early, but I think my stress is about the number of things that I want to put out. Like I have so many things that I want to put out. Mm. I have so many ideas and I just want to get it out there. To the world and see see how people react, so that then I can figure out what I want to lean into. Yeah, because I think that's the problem. Is like we have all these ideas, but we wait for like the perfect camera, the perfect microphone, the perfect this, the perfect that, that we yeah. never end up putting it out, and we don't even know if it's gonna pop or not. Whereas like I'm yeah. down to put out a hundred different things, so that people can tell me what I need to focus on. Can I tell you a story? Yeah, that shows how overly. I ho- how much I overthink and I'm, I'm a perfectionist. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I know where you're going. No, this no, this is funny. This is like I was seven years old. Oh, yeah. I don't know uh, where ba- you're going. Back in the day. <laughs> back in the day. But I was, we were doing this like project in school. And you remember we used to sit like in crisscross applesauce all around the circle and you used to just share like your notebook. No, y'all didn't. <laughs> <laughs> y'all didn't do that? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's the California thing. <laughs> talk about our feelings no but there was this like project we had to write a story on an animal and talk about how they got whatever like their stripes their smell like whatever okay and i got handed a skunk (laughs) and so i was like okay i'm gonna write about how it got its nasty smell and we had we had two weeks to write i remember it was like a time period and then we had to share our stories out loud in that circle crisscross applesauce (laughs) And we had those little, like, notebooks, the black, white. Yeah, you yeah, know, the something. marble joints. Yeah, the marble yeah. one. And then I think we were, like, sharing stories for, like, a week. And, like, everyone had to go. And so I write the story, and I'm like, yo, this story is actually kind of cool. Like, at seven years old, I was like, oh, I'm, this is cool. This is a dope story. And so I was hella excited. I sat down, hella excited to share it. And then I started to hear people around me. And I was like, oh, no, my story's not done yet. Uh... And then every single day... I was so excited. I was like, no, I got it. And I would reread it. And then I would hear people around me and I'd be like, okay, it's not ready yet. It's not ready yet. And then I kept doing that. And I never shared the story about how the skunk got its smell. And I say that story because I think about it often of like, I do this to myself. I feel like I know what's right. And I have this intuition, like, no, this story is dope. This, this, this project or idea is like dope, but there's something in the back of my mind. There's comparison. There's maybe it's not good yet oh, this person got it way better. Like, there's all these thoughts that go through my head and it feels like it's not enough and it's not enough and I just have to keep going and adding more. And that's the way I think about it all the time because it's the epitome of how I think, of how I operate. And it's something I'm consistently unlearning is to know, like, it's good enough because you just put it out there. Is that is that why you don't put out more poetry? You know, my poetry is intimate. My poetry is intimate. And I feel like I don't, it's like a very vulnerable side. Well, I told you this in my therapy session. My therapist was like, I don't think you're as vulnerable as you think. And I was like, uh, Miss Ma'am, <laughs> <laughs> was like, I built a whole platform on vulnerability. Um, but she's right. There's certain things that I struggle to share because it's so raw. It's so vulnerable. But, you know, I put that, I put that poetry out there and I'm really trying to do more of that. But you have poetry too. You a whole poet. I'm Excuse me. <laughs> I I had a run in college where I did a few. Wait, and this was for fun? You were just writing for fun. This was just for fun, but I like performed it. I like Let's hear it. The college Let's hear You know what's funny? I was actually looking it up on Facebook to see if I still had it. I I deleted it. I don't know. Somebody deleted it, but Yeah, well, I mean, you, didn't, you didn't save your poetry? Nah. I mean, oh. I could I could I could get something else popping, you know? Yeah. I, mean? I could do it again. But I'm a one-time stand-up type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'd be I'd be down to like write to and just do it somewhere. Oh my god, you should. Yeah. You should. What's your what was the poetry? So this is the thing that I, I we bonded over. There's a theme to my poetry. It's all about the women. I was gonna say it's not, <laughs> I it feels like that's what it is. But you and I bonded over journaling. Yeah. And 
like have you always been a writer like you were you were in sales and maybe I have a different mentality on what sales means mm -hmm. but it gives me like rigid hella business that's what you think that's that's what I think is maybe maybe I'm wrong I don't know okay. but you are so creative and you have this like side that's very very vulnerable how how do you balance the two or maybe I'm wrong about sales maybe there's a different side to it well that's why I hated it well, all right. I like sales, and sales is what I'm doing a lot more of now, especially with the app coming out. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like I just started, like I'm starting to have a lot of calls with like heads of benefits, oh, wow. heads of employee assistance programs within HR teams. Mm -hmm. So, like they are sales calls, they're discovery calls. I'm asking important questions to know, like, yo, what do y'all need for for Blue Dot to be part of the mix, right? Yeah. But now, it feels so less rehearsed, like. Uh -huh. I didn't even have a script planned. I didn't have like a deck. I was just having a conversation. Mm -hmm. It's all re like relationship building, which I love yeah. doing. But when I was in sales and tech, it was very scripted. Like mm -hmm. the marketing team gave us a script that we would memorize and then present to clients. Really? Yeah. And we had to say certain words or less. It, it was it was weird. But like all sales teams do that. Like that's how they operate. But wow. I I didn't feel like I had... Like, I like the relationship building part of it. When I wasn't code switching, wasn't faking it, mm. which is what I do now. But then I also felt very restricted creatively. Yeah. As well. I so, would imagine you in that situation just feeling like, yeah, I got so much that I want to put out there. Yeah. Even, even like, it was a lot of memorization and regurgitation of, like, lines for the most part. And even, like, the yeah. decks, you would think, like, oh, let me put together my own deck. Like, the decks were already created for us. No, because your decks are ghetto. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, 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 no, we don't want that. <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> yeah, that's the one time I tried to be creative. They didn't put it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah, I told you about, like, one time when I was, like, I had this idea for, like, what I would call a creative idea for this meeting. And my manager was like, bro, your, your job is to set up meetings. Go set up meetings. So I did feel restricted in certain areas. That's not your job. I did feel <laughs> restricted in certain areas. That they didn't allow me to be creative. Yeah. I. What's the like. Talk about you now. Because yeah. right now you are just. I see you as this like popping creative king. Like you out here posting on TikTok. All, you popping on TikTok. You popping on LinkedIn. You popping on all the places. Five it. You know what's weird? Like I struggle with embracing that title of being creative. Really? One. Because. I th I don't know why, but like it's th for me in my head, it's tied to like influencers or like mm -hmm. content creators, and I feel like I'm. That's just like one part of me, but I'd rather yeah. be known as like a tech founder. You know what I mean? But uh -huh. that's just me in my head. Do you feel like there's not enough creating, value in being a creative? Well, that's what I'm saying. That's just me in my head creating this like hypothetical hierarchy of like what titles are supposed to mean, which is yeah. ironic because. That was the whole idea of leaving corporate is to like mm -hmm. not chase a title. You know what I mean? Mm, how? Yeah. Tell me more about that. But also, I struggle with the idea of being a creative because. Okay, so. One of the things that I've realized is like our most authentic selves is the version of ourselves that we. Were told, earlier in our lives that we couldn't be, or shouldn't be. So very early I'm on, right. like, <laughs> like you know, in, like, middle school, like, you do, like, uh, art shows or science fairs, stuff like that. What'd you do? So I just, like, you know, people would, just, like, draw certain things, and, like, my thing was hideous. Like, all my <laughs> art that I would draw was just, like, hideous, right? Yeah. I mean, to this day, my mom still makes some of my handwriting. Uh, She's like, thank God computers came out so people <laughs> could read what you have to write. You know what I mean? At Baba's mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this idea of just, like, creating anything or, like, transferring an idea from my head to some sort of like tangible paper object, whatever mm -hmm. is uncomfortable. Cause I always got made fun of. So wow. now it's weird when people call me a creative, I'm like, and people praised you when you worked at Facebook, TikTok, I'm sure for non, like, for non creative stuff, non creative stuff. But I'm saying now people highlight my creativity and it's weird. Mm. I'm just like, I thought y'all wasn't with it back then, but it's not that they wasn't with it. It was that I wasn't using the right creative outlet at the time. Yeah. Like, I'm not a painter. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. You are creative, though. But there are other outlets to being creative that I think over time you just learn about yourself. And listen, to me, like, these tech founders had to be creative. Sure. You know? Like, there, there's a level of creativity that has to come with 
thinking of an idea and bringing it to life. That too. Like there's so much power in creativity. That too. And maybe it's just like redefining what it means to us. It's the same way that I struggled when people called me a DEI expert. I didn't like that. Why? Because on the pet in my internal brain of the pedestal of titles, careers, mm. industries, like I didn't want to be pigeonholed into DEI. I felt like I was building something bigger than just DEI. And like, yeah, I also see other businesses that don't value DEI, hence all the layoffs mm. in specific departments. I mean, like DEI departments are being just wiped, wiped out, out completely, right? Mm -hmm. So in my head, I was like, again, like for some reason, tech founder mm -hmm. was such a sexier... <laughs> more representative <laughs> title that I wanted to be associated with. You can add it to your hinge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you ain't lying. You ain't lying. He but yeah, like, just like, it felt limiting. And it's weird because I know I have people that are in DI that are going to listen to this and like, mm -hmm. what do you mean? Am I not, am I not enough? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like, like this feels like, I feel like I'm going to get canceled from DI people. <laughs> like, and so does this make sense? Does it does. Does creative feel like it also limits you? What does creative feel like? It feels it feels like I'm part of the cool kids table. Really? The title of creative feels like I'm part of the cool kids table. Like I think growing up, it feels it feels accepting. Because mm. for so long, I was made to feel like I wasn't part of that group. Yeah. Yeah. Or that I shouldn't strive to be part of that group. Mm. Even even in sales, which is interesting, I never made this connection, but even in sales, there were cross-functional teams, but all the cross-functional teams were there to help the seller sell. Mm. So even, and this is just a hypothetical made up in my head hierarchy that doesn't exist, yeah. but in my head, I'm like, sales, mm. cross-functional teams. Damn. And creatives were part of that cross-functional team. Because you're like, we made the money. Yeah, but again, that's that association to money, right? Even mm. yo, even today, and I'm gonna record this episode when I get home. I was being so hard on myself this week because I wasn't being productive. Yeah. Because productivity in my mind means selling. Like I didn't send any pitch emails. I didn't set up any any mm. any pitch meetings. I didn't slide in anybody's DMs on LinkedIn. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was being mad creative. Yeah. I came up with mad ideas, but in my head. That's not productive because it doesn't equal to a short term Oof. check. You know, I fuck on that same topic. I feel like I've been embracing this idea of just being versus doing because that's what productivity means is to do something, yeah. do something, produce something, sell something, yeah. send something out. But we forget that existing is also us. It's part of the productivity to rest, to be, to enjoy I think I had talked to you about this like last year, but there was a moment where I was having like a creative like block. I was like, I'm not thinking about creative things. Like I'm just not, but it was like, I'm also not doing anything to inspire creativity yeah. because I'm like in this behind this laptop, like just working. Like there's nothing that is inspiring my creativity. I'm not out here experiencing to create, you know what I mean? Yeah. And now again, that's why I love traveling because creative to me is so liberating because I hate titles. Like if you look at my resume, like my LinkedIn, like nothing I've done makes sense. Like they're like, how did you go from events to marketing to comms? Like I don't like titles because I don't feel like I fit in the box of a title. Like mm -hmm. I am just a storyteller. Like I, that feels liberating to me. Like I love to tell stories in any type of format, any type of way. But I feel like at the same time, like to travel so much this last year I feel like I've been existing and doing and like it that's been my pr productivity is to just sit and exist and experience the world and tell these stories in different ways yeah. and meet different people. And I'm like, damn, like I want to have you on my podcast or I want to like yeah. talk to you more, learn from you. Like sometimes we think sending an email is productivity, but really just this right now. Yeah. This is part of it. Yeah. And I like, I take a lot of inspiration from comedians 
and they mm-hmm. often say like after they record like their one hour special for example that they typically you know publish they take a break just to live life yeah because they need to figure out what they're even going to talk about next like if you don't live period. life you're gonna have nothing to talk about period yeah period and that's why i'm like i cannot i don't crave labor i don't crave sit behind a like laptop and like working the rest of my life in front of a laptop like i want to be out in the field like experiencing life because i want to i think i told you this i'm excited for the day that i become a mother because when i see my kids like grow up like i just cannot wait to tell them these stories to take them to the places i went to and i just want to experience life because i grew up my whole life with a lot of family members talking about how they wish they would have done this they wish they would have done that Mm. and there was a lot of like regret in their stories and I know that there will maybe be some regrets when I'm older but like I don't want to live life feeling like I should have done something more yeah like I just want to maximize it to the fullest but at the same time we got to pay bills and all that that's one thing I've always wanted to do I wanted to just like get permission to go to like a, a nursing home and just like you know, record like five minute podcast episodes with them. You know what I mean? Do it and talk about that. Just like, do it. What do you regret in life? Yo, I don't. It's just like like that. I mean, I told you I'm going on tour, which is exciting. So I'm gonna tell, tell those stories. What What are you doing? You going on tour? Oh For, what? Stop. Tell it. me. I I didn't hear about it. Stop it. Tell Shut me up. all over again. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. I'm not plugging this. I'm not plugging this. <laughs> What? Plug it. I'm not plugging this. I don't want, I feel He's very. He's going on tour, y'all. I feel very salesy. Catch him. Catch him where he can. I feel salesy. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I don't know why I feel uncomfortable right now. Wait, should I take the script that no, I gave you? No, no. I gave him a whole script. You gave me a script? No, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm wait, the creative what? on your team. <laughs> <laughs> I need a creative. I need a lot of help. No, stop. Wait, you're not going to pitch this? Can I pitch it for you? Can I, can I like, Babel is going on tour, y'all. And he's about to capture y'all stories in all these different cities. And I think it's dope. Period. That's all you need. That's all you need. <laughs> yeah, period. More details soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, No, but I, I, I am excited. Why do you feel uncomfortable? Let's dive deep into it. I don't know. I really don't know. I guess, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's the lights. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Fuck it. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's the lights. I don't know. Well, I typically record episodes. Not you episodes. blaming the studio. <laughs> I typically record episodes from a coffee shop and it feels very just like, yeah. We just shoot, we're getting a coffee. This feels yeah. very, feels very official. Yeah, I don't know. You belong here. I do. This is also, I mean, this isn't my first time. Re- I don't know. I don't know why I feel so uncomfortable. <laughs> he said my heart's racing. I never, <laughs> well, I'm chilling. I'm chilling, by the way. But I don't never feel uncomfortable talking about myself or like pitching something. I don't know. Maybe, I really don't know. I don't know. I am what also. What are you feeling right now? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oh, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. No, but okay. You know what? You know He's what's going crazy? on tour. You know it's crazy. You know it's crazy <laughs> that I didn't talk about it for like the past five minutes, and people were like, "Oh my god, this must be a big deal." It's not the big of a deal. I'm just all right. Uh-uh, so we uh-uh. record. No. Uh-uh. We're not doing that. We're not. No, we're not minimizing the work that we're doing. Oh my god. It doesn't have to be a big deal, Bobby. It could just be a deal. It's going to be big, small, but this is, don't minimize your work. This is dope. This is dope that he's doing. It's okay. It's not that serious. What? All right. So listen, uh, you and I record uh, episodes and we have hour long conversations with people. Listen, you make me cry in episodes and I just hype you (laughs) up. Okay. This is, this is how we show up for each other. I appreciate that. I'm going to hype you up. I appreciate that. No, but you and I, we record episodes every week and they're hour long conversations with people. And let's be honest, they're like time consuming, recording, booking guests, editing, all of that. Yes. All so of I'm going to just, I typically record it at um, different coffee shops. And I thought like, well, why don't I just record five to 10 minute versions of this podcast episode mm-hmm. just like on the road? So that's yeah. what I'm going to do. Take it on the road and just give more people an opportunity to share their story. Period. Period. That's it. And it's a deal. Still feels uncomfortable. No, I love <laughs> it. I love it. And let's talk about your app. <laughs> oh my God. Here we go. The app. I'm like, now he's on a roll. Let's talk about all the things. No, but really... I'm so excited for this app to just pop off. You have no idea. Does this app feel like you created something that you yourself have needed? Have needed? Has needed? Words. It is. It is. I mean, for so long, I thought, like, therapy was inaccessible. Mm. And as someone with no insurance at the moment, therapy is a little expensive. So... Mm. 
Yeah, I feel like I I needed a like a solution that was cost effective where I can process my thoughts. Mm. Like I've been journaling for the past couple of years, but I never go back to read them. So I can't identify mm. like, am I growing? Am I doing better? Like, what yeah. are some of the trends? But also I have been challenging myself as I've been journaling. Yeah. So like I'm literally writing, like, I feel like this. I'm uncomfortable. Well, why do you feel uncomfortable? I'm asking myself those questions, but not everyone has that level of just like comfortableness with themselves to do that yeah so i feel like the app will help them think through their thoughts but also limit some of those limiting beliefs that they do have so yeah i mean long story short yeah i you know speaking of limiting beliefs yeah. and a little bit of imposter syndrome i was talking about like yeah how i feel like i've been having it in the podcast how do you feel about imposter syndrome i don't know if we've ever talked about it really has it ever hit you in plural have you felt it more in corporate have you felt it, period? I felt it when I was at Facebook, for sure. I definitely feel it now with Plural. You do? Yeah. In what ways? Well, building the app is one thing. Mm -hmm. but And people are like, oh, it's such an accomplishment launching it. But I feel like I'm just getting started. Like, just because I launch it doesn't mean it's going to be successful. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, like, can I do it? Did you celebrate that win, though, that you launched Of course. It? I'll definitely be celebrating that win. But yeah. a lot of it is just like, is it possible? Like, can I do it? And yeah, of course, we compare ourselves to, to other people. And it's true what they say. Like, we always compare up. We never compare down. Like, there's, a, mm. there's millions of people with ideas that never end up producing an app. Mm. Producing their own GPT and all these kind of things. But I'm comparing myself to people, unfortunately, that have, like, been in the game for mad long for example i just had a call the other day with like the head of benefits at some finance company right mm -hmm. and i'm pitching the app to, to be part of their employee benefits program mm -hmm. and the partner that they've already onboarded is the partner that i use for my therapy session so cool. it's a big player in the game so of course i'm just like well yeah why would you use my app you got those that I use mm. to you to that introduce me to therapy. Yeah. So I'm over there complimenting them as far as like, oh no, you made a great choice. That's a great partner. Cause I because mm. you know, to make them to make them feel like they made the right choice. But at the yeah. same time, now I gotta come back and be like, no, this I wanna say little app was which, which is bad, but like I'm saying little app. Yeah, this little new app is is way better than what you're already you using. Downplay. Yeah. Downplay your your creations, your ideas. Yeah, but but it's because I'm comparing it. myself to like these yeah. companies that have raised billions of dollars. These companies that are already implemented at the Facebooks, probably at your job. No, they are implemented at your job. Yeah. Like I'm comparing myself to Lira. Lira is, yeah. is 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 who they're already using. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or like they're like, oh well, we already have Headspace. Well, like why this? You know what I mean? Yeah. So but yeah. we all started somewhere, right? They yeah. started somewhere. Yeah. But like. I get it. I get that feeling of like feeling you're just this new kid on the block and you're like, I'm trying to just, I'm trying to pitch this. But yeah, you have that. So you don't need me. Yeah. But how have you been overcoming that? Because there has to be a moment where it switches. There has to be a moment of like, nah, I believe that this app is what you need because listen, you have Lyra, but no one's going to do it like this or no one's going to do it like me. I think it's, I mean, part of it is the, com or the audience that I've built and them telling me how much they need it. Mm. It's also just like having conversations with people. Like someone asked me the other day on LinkedIn, they were like, yo, how do you get over like fa your family criticizing you when you put out content? And we were just talking about essentially like all of the doubts. Yeah. And I was like, instead of having this conversation with me, like you should be having this conversation with the app. Yeah. With that self-discovery coach. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, you should be like... So every time I have a conversation with someone, they ask me for advice, I keep thinking like, oh, I can take myself out of it and a much better version of me, even having this conversation is a tool that I'm building. Yeah. So yeah, just like talking to people in the community is, is a reminder as well. How do you give that internal confidence to yourself without the, because the external, obviously you need it. Like the external validation is helpful. How do you, how do you like give it to yourself? From an internal place. How do I give myself validation? Yeah. That, like, I'm on the right track? Yeah. 
I think it goes back again. It's just like having conversations with people and listening to some of their pain points. And it just validates the fact that like, yeah, what I'm building is really important. Yeah. I think as a solo founder, especially, it's really easy to just like have these continuous conversations with yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you have conversations with yourself, that's when that self-doubt creeps in. Like they often say the opposite of addiction is community. Like a lot of these addictive, Mm. self-destructive behaviors often happen when you're alone. Mm. So me just like talking to someone in the community, talking to someone in the audience, they give me that validation for myself. And you know what? As I'm saying this, maybe I'm too dependent on that. Maybe I need to find some of that self-validation because it's funny, the first... The question you asked me is like, how do you give yourself that validation? And I completely ignored that and said <laughs> that said, I don't. Uh, people. <laughs> I completely ignored that and said that I don't. I haven't thought about that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Is it in your journaling? Yeah. Yeah. Because I know our inner critics be loud too. And they be having a lot to say. Yeah. I'm definitely my hardest critic. Mm-hmm. But processing those thoughts, I think, are really helpful. Yeah. Because you don't mm-hmm. realize how self-critical you are until you process that. Yeah. And like literally write it down. Like asking myself how I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. And if I'm feeling very self-critical, the other question I ask myself is how do I want to feel? Yeah. And if I want to feel capable, confident, you know, all of these sort of things, then I need to think through like what will put me in that positive headspace. Yeah. And sometimes it's just like running, getting off that pent off energy, mm-hmm. which I had I had to literally go for a run before this. Really? Because I had a lot of pent up energy because I didn't feel productive this week. Right? Damn. But then it's also maybe I just need to like tell myself certain things. Like those mantras, those manifestations, all of those kind of things. It is hard sometimes. And I think the last one too is like you celebrate. Like I have this mm. Going thing with the homie Samara, where every week we have Friday, we sell our, our weekly wins. Mm. So we send each other voice notes on like three things that we're celebrating for the week. I love and that. And I think that helps put things into perspective as well. Mm. And we push ourselves to be like, yo, like I don't have three wins. And we just be like, no, you do. It doesn't have to be anything big. It could just be like, I was able to manage my emotions effectively this week. Mm. But like that, you know what? That's the big one celebrating wins. Celebrating wins. Yeah. And you celebrate it by voicing it out loud. Yeah. And like, listen, the app's not ready. It's not It's not going to be ready until May. Mm-hmm. There are milestones each week that I can celebrate in the development of that process to be like, yeah. that's another one. Damn. Yeah, this is good. That's another one. Another one is like celebrating those small milestones as well. Like breaking up that large ass goal, which is like launching the app by May. Mm-hmm. And, like, celebrating all these weekly things that lead up to that big launch. Because they need to happen. And I love that you're doing that because you're, like, part of the process. Like, you're, like, similar to what I was talking about earlier. Like, I was witnessing my healing, like, like firsthand. Yeah. You're witnessing this process of building something firsthand. And you're, like, remembering it. And I always think about, like, Babel, if you were to write a book, <laughs> you'll know what it took to get to where you are because you're being so conscious and intentional throughout the whole process and you're celebrating your wins and also being conscious of the hard parts, having those conversations with yourself. Like all of that is so powerful so that when you do get down, write your book, manifesting in the future, you'll know your process and you'll be able to help somebody else through their process. I do want to launch a Kim Duarte's book and it'll be like humans of New York, but it'll be us. but But I want to find a way to have everybody get paid for it oh, sad. like all of the all of the guests be part of the sort of like split well we can I'll send this out. to netflix i'm telling you <laughs> 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 tu eres needs to be out there okay yes, so, that's fire all right so last thing so for us to wrap up what's one creative thing that you're looking forward to publishing or sharing creating whatever it is and if you don't have one i can go first one th- go first go. okay so one of the things that I've been meaning to do is have an art exhibit. Mm. And I think I'm finally going to host that this year. So the whole idea, obviously, for Blue Dial is to redefine professionalism mm-hmm. because we think it looks a certain way. So I commissioned a local artist. And this is part of the tour as well. So I commissioned a local artist to create 10 designs. One is like an astronaut, a teacher, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like you've never seen an astronaut look like that. Like he has a high top. He has cuts on his eyebrows. He's got... 
a face tattoo, you just like that, you know what I yeah, mean? Or like a teacher with yeah. a with a button up with a do rag on, right? And mm. I want to do the first one in New York, but I want to take that and then let's say I go to LA, mm -hmm. do a contest in LA for local artists to like submit one version of like redefining professionalism. Wow. And then commission that winning artist to do like the art exhibit, you know what I mean? And like do that from city to city. Oh my God. And then when I do the tour in different city to city, I'll also be collecting stories with in the coffee shops. You know what I mean? So like that's what I want to do this year. That is fire. And all of that is to raise awareness for the app coming out in May 2024. <laughs> I'm going to wrap up there. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> Ooh, I don't have anything as exciting as that. But um, <laughs> should have gone first. Um, there's two. There's actually two things. One is I am excited to put out more of my poetry. Ooh, are you going to perform it soon? I, well, one thing at a time. <laughs> Let's crawl. No, but I really want to just share it out loud. Like the way I've been doing it, like my little Poetry Mommy videos, just sharing it more because it is a part of my voice that I feel like I want to share with the world. And sometimes I feel like I don't always make sense when I speak because I speak like I'm descontrolada. Like I'm everywhere. You don't. Uh, it's organized. Okay, well, thank you, perfectionist. <laughs> but no, I feel like I just be like vomit, like word vomiting. But I feel like sometimes my poetry is exactly what I want to say. Like, I don't know. There's something about poetry that feels like I can put my thoughts into it. And it just really explains how I feel, which is why I love journaling. But that's one thing I'm excited about. Two is I actually am recording a podcast with my parents. And, you know, I talk a lot about on my podcast, I ask the question about like, Tell me your your parents' immigration story, your immigration story. Like, tell me where that beginning part is, because I feel like so much of their story is rooted in ours. And I just decided to ask them, like, would you guys want to do a podcast with me? Like, just to show how do you even have these conversations with your parents? Like, what kind of questions do you ask? And so I'm excited for that. It's going to be in Spanish because that's their primary language. But I am excited for that conversation to happen. Mi gente, that wraps up another episode of the Can't Do It As podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard, please do us a favor. Like, share, comment, wherever you're listening to this episode. Be sure to follow, subscribe, and leave us a rating and review if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Thank you and see you next time.